Well, we've heard that saying, you can't see the forest for the trees. Well, sometimes we spend so much time on detail that we forget to see just what the whole project looks like. Well, I'm gonna wind up this chuck wagon undercarriage that we started from the Spiro Ranch. And that's kind of the problem here. We spent so much time showing all the individual steps that we forget just what the whole project looks like. So I'm gonna do the whole project. I'm gonna kind of show you more of the forest of this project as I wind up this undercarriage. Well, as I introduce this project, this is an old running gear that came off the Spiro Ranch and is now part of the Johnson family memorabilia. Well, this is an opportunity to show just what all is involved when you take an old rotted down running gear and bring it back to new. I'm gonna save all the old iron, repair what I need to, and I'm gonna put all new wood in this. So this is kind of the bird's eye view of all the processes that it took to put this undercarriage back together. Well, I have been asked a number of times for the process of what is involved on replacing the wood axles that have these old thimble skein ends that accommodate the wheels. Well, I'm going to demonstrate two different approaches how to do that. Most commonly will be just with a draw knife and a file. The second method that I'm going to use on this axle is a little more automated. It is off of a homemade duplicator machine that I have that does help speed it up, but there's still always the fine tuning in the end.
Well, there's three sets of hounds in a wagon undercarriage. The front axle hounds, the rear axle reach hounds, and then the hounds that go on the tongue. I'm going to do the front axle hounds and the reach hounds next. Well, in completing the front axle, we have the rear stabilizer bars that attach to the back end of the reach hounds. And then we have what is common in a buggy for called a head block. Well, this is oftentimes called a sandboard. And then eventually we have our bolsters that will complete the front axle.
Well, the front axle can be a little more complicated, so oftentimes I'll tackle that one first. But now I need to catch the rear axle up. Well, now that we have the front bolster and the rear bolster, which actually will carry the box on this undercarriage, the last step is to build the wheels for this undercarriage. Now the desire of the owner is that I would make a tongue short enough to pull this around with a four-wheeler. So I'm going to do that, assemble the brakes, and then finally put some oil on this undercarriage.
Well, hopefully this gives you more of a bird's eye view of the whole process of what it takes to take an old rotted down undercarriage and put it back to where it's usable again. Once again, thanks for watching.